Introducing Jerry Corbetta, a green-eyed lady. I first met Jerry Corbetta and his wife, Cassie, in a natural childbirth class. I was there with my then husband, Craig Franklin, and we were anticipating, as all the other couples were, the birth of a baby. After the class was over and the babies were born, I invited everybody over to our place for a buffet dinner and to share memories and renew the fun times that we had had in those classes. At one point, Jerry wandered into the living room and sat down at our piano and started to play. I was arrested by just how wonderful it sounded. Nothing like when my kids played the piano. So I wandered in and looked at him and said, wow, you play so well. You could be a professional. And he looked up at me and said, I've been playing professionally since I was three. The H. Ross Cannonball came into existence because of an idle thought that went through Melinda's mind. Uh, this took place in the very early stages of 1992. We had kept in touch, Jerry, I, and Cassie, and sometimes my husband Craig, and a couple times gotten together for dinner or something of the sort, but I had finally understood, because Jerry had impressed on me, that he was actually a rather well-known professional and had even played Green-Eyed Lady for me, much to my chagrin and embarrassment, because even I had heard of Green-Eyed Lady, but had no idea he was the one that wrote it and recorded it. So when the idea of doing the Atros Cannonball occurred to me, even though my then husband, Craig Franklin, very frequently wrote songs. I realized that if it was going to be a success, which I really wanted it to be, there would need to be a professional in charge. And that's why my mind turned to Jerry. Craig was the first to admit that because he seemed to be so left brain writing songs did not come particularly naturally to him. This was also true with when he attempted to write poetry. It was a labored effort that would bring out perspiration on his forehead. It did not flow from the soul, shall we say. And I wanted this to be a particularly impactive kind of song. Therefore, I knew that I was going to have to sit there while Craig wrote it, and then I was going to have to sequester it and edit. And that's exactly how the H. Ross Cannonball came into existence. I acted as midwife, and it was a very interesting experience that provided me with insights that I reflected on later. It's tough to know exactly what to say about Craig. He was very intelligent. His IQ is 180, which he was quite likely to tell me over and over and over again. I never said much about it because I knew mine was higher and I knew that would probably hurt his feelings. He had so little in some ways and he tried so hard, but he was a brilliant programmer. Uh, his math skills were absolutely amazing, and he had the conscience of a tulip, except, of course, a tulip was better looking. So I must also point out that Craig Franklin is, was then and remains today Michael Emerling's very, very, very best friend. They each have a use for the other and each of them, as I indicate, desperately is in need of editing. I was surprised to find out that producing a, a song could be fun and not at all depressing, which had been my previous uh, experience with the practice. 
We had such fun putting it together. When you listen to it, you're going to hear me performing. I'm the one yelling, Ross is boss! And also blowing the whistle, for which I got a credit, which I didn't realize was going to happen, but what the heck, I didn't care. It was a delightful experience, and it sort of lit the fire for a lot of people who were already excited about Ross Perot. But what I didn't know was that the person that had made Ross Perot interesting to all of us was actually Brock Davignon. Life is always full of surprises, isn't it? Jerry was one of the most authentic, kind, sweet, and funny people that I have ever met in my life. We spent time together. We'd go out to dinner. We would talk when we finished getting over crying over the fact that each of us had lost the person we thought was our forever friend. And I will never regret the time and the experiences that we shared. I'll always remember walking down the beach at Hendry's in Santa Barbara and having Jerry tell me the real story of the writing of Green-Eyed Lady. It was just one of those moments I can't ever let go of. We lost Jerry when he came down with Pick's disease and moved back to Colorado. He quit music because he knew that that was one of the things that was going to be closed to him. But Jerry, let me tell you, you touched my life and I hope I touched yours. Blessings. Welcome to America in 1992. Our factories here are closing down. We're scared and jobs are few. Greedy politicians sold out you and me. It's time we had some layoffs in Washington, D.C. No more crooked congressmen, it's time to bounce them all. Let's cut the tax and lay some tracks for the H. Ross Cannonball. Politicians get free meals, free trips, and drugs and mail. While ordinary people either pay or go to jail. Gonna give them all free bus fare home from Washington, D.C. And that's the final tax paper those crooks will ever see. Get back on our feet again, back to standing tall. It's time to stoke the freedom train, the H. Ross Cannonball. You know Ross loves America, he'll represent us all. Your boat, your ticket on the train, the H. Ross Cannonball. When I see a picture of Ross Perot, the first thing that pops into my mind is Hendry's Beach and the story of why Jerry wrote Green-Eyed Lady, always in my memory. <laughs> 